Hello, humans. Master Dinner Flex here, bringing you a little quality content you deserve. And today, I'll be going over a post uh, Edco Lair of Darkness. Now, I don't actually want to play this deck until Eternity Code comes out, because before then, nothing changes. Um, like, nothing about the deck changes uh, except two tour guides. But once we get Eternity Code, the deck really changes because of just, like, two new cards. And I'll, you you can already see them, but I'll explain once we get into it. But um, once we get Eternity Code, I actually really like the way Lair, Lair of Darkness plays because it feels, like, more finished than it originally did. And the reason I say finished is, like, Lair... By the nature of Lilith Control is a very trap based deck. You are playing a lot of trap cards. You are a very controly, stunny deck where you're like trying to prevent your opponent from like establishing anything while at the same time building up your own resources. Um, and you just snowball off doing that. Now, uh, the thing about that deck is once you got like past turn four, or turn five, which happens because this deck is very slow is that you actually started running out of trap cards that mattered. And it's, like, there gets to a certain point where either Lilith is not grabbing effective trap cards, or it's not, it doesn't even have its effect anymore because you have too few left. Now, with the new card coming out, that actually completely undoes that, like, grinding flaw that this deck has, where it'll eventually run out. Because the dynamic of these two being on the field means you will never, ever run out of trap cards. And what you can do is, assuming you can always, uh, as assuming you always tribute an opponent's monster and get a trap, you can end the game on your opponent having one card to your, like, insane amount, like 12, 15, 17, especially if you're playing Reckless Greed, but that's a different story. Um, you can establish... So much card advantage over your opponent with these two in cycle that you'll just never run out of resources. Um, now that might sound re weird in the modern Yu-Gi-Oh because um, the game is so fast paced. But this deck is not fast paced and it is very uh, anti-like. It is a very much a stun control deck where you're trying to keep your opponent from doing as much as possible while at the same time gathering your own advantage. Kind of like the way the Tear Lock worked, where uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict would prevent your opponent from doing hardly anything while you just sit and grab cards more and more each time uh, you used it with Tsukiyomi. And that's kind of like the way this deck plays. You just gather your own cards while taking away from your opponent. But let's get into it. Triple Lilith, best card in the deck. Uh, very, very obvious. Um... Yeah, it, it, not much to say. If you've seen a single layer profile from my YouTube channel, you know how important this card is. It's literally the most important card in the deck. And then the new one, Malice Lady of Lament. Now, this card, the reason it's so important, yet not a three of, is because it's only useful when you're starting to get established. So it means not your very first play. And, realistically, you need Layer of Darkness up, or you have need to have generated a lot of monsters. Um, but if you don't have either of those things, it's not good to draw. It's only good to search, or summon with ties. Any other situation, you just don't want to see it. Um, however, once you get the establishment up, this thing is absolutely absurd. Because, um, what starts happening is... Lair of Darkness, each turn you're using Malice, is actually generating two tokens. Now that could be good for you, or it gives your opponent two tokens, but since you're giving them on their end phase, you can do whatever with them. Um, but giving, uh, generating two tokens instead of one each turn is actually very powerful, because that means um, you're giving yourself more tribute fodder for herself, um, so that means you never have to tribute her. But it also means like none of your other tribute, uh, none of your other tributors, like need to worry about tributing some critical 
because there's just so many tokens everywhere that you can distribute those and all this stuff. So it generating two tokens with Lair is actually kind of powerful. Um, even if you give your opponents two, you just attack over one and tribute the other, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, and not even to mention this lets Trap Trick be like two traps, which is insane. Uh, yeah, this card is just very, very, very good in the deck. Um, you can play two. I wouldn't suggest three, but this card is pretty fantastic. Um, I know, like, it looks on paper very bad, but it's very usable. It's actually just a really solid card. Um, but yeah, enough of that. Two Tour Guide. Um, it's actually probably one of the worst fiends in here outside of Skarm. Uh, the first one isn't. The second one always is. Um, so seeing one Tour Guide when you have ties is, like, fantastic because that means you can... So if they use a hand trap on the tour guide, it lets the ties of the brethren resolve perfectly, um, like with Ash Blossom and stuff. Um, and if not, you actually get four. You effectively like get four monsters if you see tour guide and ties, which is great. Uh, yeah, it's just very solid when it comes to that. But uh, it also just makes a small link play occasionally. But seeing the second one, I have so much trouble with because. Um, after you see the first one, the second one almost, like, it, it pretty much just doesn't matter. Like, every time you see the second one, or for, God forbid, you actually see both of them in your opening hand, it's really rough. Um, because all these cards are pretty much normal summons, so seeing two of a normal summon that's super weak to hand traps is not ideal. Um, but I would still play two just because seeing it with ties is just insane. Then saying in, super important. It lets you search hand traps while also getting actual traps. And then Skarm. Uh, Skarm is interesting because um, when we get this card, we're no longer uh, turning a level 3 fiend into Sangan, Lilith, and Skarm. We're actually turning it into Lilith, Sangan, and Malice. Because if you... Uh, if you... Uh, if you summon Skarm, it dies and get the search in the end phase... That's actually kind of a problem because we're going into a troll format where like troll is super popular and you don't actually just want to waste a Skarm search like that and you don't want to definitely waste a body if you don't have to if you know troll somewhere because you have to get the Sangan search. It's mandatory uh, when you tribute it. So if they troll you after the Sangan search it means Skarm died for nothing, and you just, like, lost... You lost a monster that could be tributed for anything. So in those scenarios, you'll summon just Malice instead, and even if you don't have Lair up, it's better to summon Malice in that scenario just because you're not wasting a Skarm for no reason. Um, and it, like, lets you... You can still tribute it for Lilith if you don't have Lair with Malice. And then three Arima and one Diablos... Super important. Uh, Diablos is very, very... Like, I a lot of the times I say I want to cut this entirely, but ultimately your deck has no push, and it's just really, really important to have a monster that just says, deal with me in a stun deck. A 3,000 untargetable, untributable monster. It's just, like, you don't ever not... You never not want this tool in this deck. Um, it's just too important. Like, the rest of his effects don't even matter. Like, you tributing even an opponent's monster to, like, hit a card out of their hand that they choose isn't even that impactful. It's just the fact that he's there is what the impact is. And then the hand traps you search. Uh, these could be two of anything, but I would always suggest they be two different hand traps. Because if you draw one, uh, it means Sangans can search a hand trap that is not the same one. So that means you can use both those hand traps. Because if these were both Ash Blossom, or if these were both Droll, the issue is you can only use one of them. Well, I guess you can use two Droll, but that it literally doesn't do anything. So you actually want to have two different hand traps for when you're cycling with Sangan, just so you can use all of them, which is kind of important. Now for the spells, triple extravi wabby, um, yeah, it's a stun deck, you need it. Then triple ties of the brethren, 
Uh, because of Malice and two Tour Guide as well, it made this card a lot better. And with the new spell coming out, it makes this card a lot better. You effectively have 10. You Originally, the combo was like 6 level 3 fiends that can turn this online. And that combo now went to 10. Um, so you have like 10 level 3 fiends that can turn this online. And that's just fantastic. Triple Layer of Darkness. Uh, namesake of the deck. Two Fusion Dispatch. Now, this is the new spell I'm talking about. Uh, pretty much, you can't link summon... You can't go into your extra deck for anything of the turn you activate this uh, in this deck. But that doesn't matter because you don't use your extra deck for any reason. Um, well, except outside of one scenario. But that rarely, rarely comes up. Um, so, Fusion Dispatch. Ignore the downside. But what you do is you activate this card... Reveal Sandwich from your extra deck, assuming you don't banish every single one of them with Extrav. And then you summon Sangyan from your hand or deck. Hopefully your deck. But when you do that, you allow this card to not tribute itself. You allow this card to not tribute itself, which it gains its bonus effect from not tributing itself. So that means every effect that would normally have them use themselves is now not only not doing so, so you can keep it online longer, but then it also searches a hand trap in the process. So let's say you have Lair, Arima, Fusion, Dispatch. You can Dispatch, Sangyan, Normal Arima, Tribute it, Search Diablo, Summon Diablo, Search a hand trap, Tribute the Arima, Take a card out of their hand, you generate two tokens, and you still have whatever is left in your hand. So, um... That's really solid. Uh, but not only that, like it does the same with Lair. Uh, I mean, Lilith, the Malith, all these other cards. It's also like, it, it's an interesting bait because it's not like they can say they don't know what you're going to summon until you reveal it. Um, so like, if you activate it, you're not revealing it until the card is resolving. So they have to like, if they're going to ash it, they gotta ash it immediately before they even know what you're summoning. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too. Uh, but finally, it summons a level 3 fiend from deck 2. So this is two more copies of Sangan to get Tides of the Brethren online. And like there's just so many ways to get to Sangan at this point that it's actually just insane. Um, yeah. And then finally, one terraforming uh, at Search's Lair. For the traps, because, mainly because of the uh, introduction of Malice, you want Triple Trap Trick. Um, I don't even like Trap Trick that much, but its utility with Malice is absolutely insane. Uh, the added ability to get a trap, activate a trap, and then Malith, uh, Malice, or whatever her name is, can get the banished one back means, like, you're never, again, never running out of trap cards, and it makes more of the trap tricks online for longer and longer. It's just, like, it's a very easy-to-see infinite snowball when you're looking at these cards cycling each other. And trap trick is one of the cards that helps facilitate that. Triple impermanence, uh, because there's not a lot of hand traps, I felt three of the trap hand trap would be important. Triple Compulse, because these monsters are weenie, so you actually have to keep them from being attacked. Uh, two Dinomiscus. Not only is it just like a good trap, obviously, but it's also a monster that summons itself. And even though it's not naturally dark, and even if you don't have Lair of Darkness, you can still tribute it for Malice, because she only requires them just being monsters, and it doesn't care if they're dark monsters. Um... So that's helpful, and not and in addition, even when these guys banish themselves, you you can get just get them right back with Malith. And finally, if you have a trap in your grave or banished, and you tribute this for cost with Malith, you can still just grab this back. So you turn the Paleo monster back into a Paleo trap, which is kind of cool. Two back to the front. I really want to play three of this, but with uh, three trap trick Malith, uh, Malice, and like all the other like. It's not a good card to just open up with, unfortunately, even though I want to play three. And, like, you already have so many ways to it and to recycle it. I just didn't feel that it's good to have three. 
And then finally, one Metaverse, because, uh, Lair of Darkness. Uh, I really wish this was at more than one, but we actually, uh, the game can't allow that while well, Mystic Mind's in the game. Then for the side deck, most of this doesn't matter. Um, the only thing I would really suggest is side waking the dragons. Um, if you are even slightly concerned about Lightning Storm, what you do is you replace two of any trap or two of any, like, non-impactful spell like this isn't very impactful game two and three so you can side these for two wakings um and when they lightning storm you while you have trap trick you just activate trap trick banish a waking set the waking lightning storm resolves and then you get to summon a fusion that just doesn't let them play um but another option is a uh, bear blocker it's a level three fiend so that means your entire deck can get it but not only that during your opponent's turn, set spells and traps uh, cannot be destroyed by card effects. Um, so it protects your entire back row from Lightning Storm. Uh, however, none of these really counter evenly. So I, I define counters evenly, whether it be Sanctum into Lancia, Solemn Judgment. Uh, I think evenly matched is still a better card than Lightning Storm, just because like it's much harder to counter evenly. And especially in this deck where you're required to play normal trap cards instead of counter trap cards, it's actually really rough to counter evenly. So you, you, I would say that should be something you should consider. Now the extra deck is where it gets kind of goofy. Since this is an extravagance deck, any extra deck monster that you plan on using needs to be at 3. And the most important ones at 3 are Beat Cop, because this deck actually uses its effect... And I have used this effect multiple times in testing. Uh, it, it's a tributor. That's all I gotta say. It allows you to tribute monsters and it protects your field spell from being destroyed. So that's pretty cool. And then three sandwich. Because you have to reveal this with a uh, fusion dispatch. And for the rest of the extra deck, we got two Wee Witch, two Link Spiders just to turn tokens into something more useful. Uh, two last warrior to summon off of Waking the Dragon, so you can just summon this after the Lightning Storm, and they literally, if they don't have impermanence, they cannot play the game. And then you got two Ultimate Falcon for the counter opposite, where they're like playing a stupid ass stun deck, and they're like, I'm gonna activate my trap card. You summon Ultimate Falcon, and they can't out it in any scenario. And then finally, this is the goofy one I was talking about. This could be literally anything, like a third Last Warrior, a third Wee Witch, uh, another random extra deck monster. But this is something funny. Um, I've never actually in any scenario wanted to summon this. But if we, if they destroy Waking the Dragon, but they leave like your field of tributors up, uh, you can summon this. And like, let's say you had... A Lilith, Malice, and they destroy Waking the Dragons and you summon Urking. So you summon Urking, and when they make a play, you tribute you use Lilith to tribute Malice, get a trap to start rebuilding your back row, and then this card will pop cards. Every time you tribute a monster, um you just target a card on the field and destroy it. So that's pretty cool. Um I don't know why Lair of Darkness just didn't get their own version of this. This is actually a pretty cool effect. But, yep. That's about it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, it's very hard to get gameplay videos of this because it's not TCG legal. So it's very hard to test for this. Um, it's also kind of awkward because you have to test it in Master Rule 5. Uh, because by the time we get this set... Uh, we will be in the new Master Rule adjustments, so that's something we'll have to keep in mind. But outside of that, um, this deck's actually just really, really cool now. Um, like, it was cool before, and I really enjoyed playing it, but just the new utility that Malice gives you is really strong. And, like, I can't, like, emphasize this enough. It literally changes the way the Lilith dynamic works in the deck where you never have to worry about running trap cards and it's if anything if you take anything from this it's just another copy of Lilith because Lair of Darkness more than anything else the pure Lair of Darkness deck just needed another quick effect tributor and that's what this is 
But yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching, and remember, Master Dinnerflax will take your soul.